God's Spirit has led us here. 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 There's a sweet, sweet spirit in the place. Let us pray. Precious Savior, breathlessly we wait for your coming. The house has been made ready. The tree is trimmed with beautiful lights and sentimental ornaments. Already there are presents under the tree. The guests have been invited. All of the ingredients for a delightful, sumptuous meal have been purchased. Our hearts are filled to overflowing with love for you and for one another. Come into our waiting hearts that we may celebrate the miraculous day of your birth. Welcome, Lord Jesus, for it is in your name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
be happy with our favorite meal. We can be happy with a comfy chair to snuggle in. We can be happy with our favorite things. But happiness is fle fleeting and can leave us wanting something more. Joy is the something more. Joy is all-encompassing. Joy fills our spirits. Joy enables us to praise God even during difficulties. Hear now these words of joy from Luke 2, 9 through 10. The Lord's angel stood before them. The Lord's glory shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said, Don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news today, wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. Today, we light the Advent candle of joy. Joy that is so much more than mere happiness. Joy that is all-encompassing and is contagious. Joy that enables us to keep, keep moving forward when all we want to do is give up. Let us pray. God, we are so filled with joy, joy that only comes from you, joy that we are compelled to share. May this joy spread throughout the world and change lives. Amen. In those days, Caesar Augustus declared that everyone throughout the empire should be enrolled in the tax list. This first enrollment occurred when Quirinius governed Syria. Everyone went to their own cities to be enrolled. Since Joseph belonged to David's house and family line, he went up from the city of Nazareth in Galilee to David's city called Bethlehem in Judea. He went to be enrolled together with Mary, who was promised to him in marriage, and who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. She gave birth to her firstborn child, a son, wrapped him snugly, and laid him in a manger. Because there was no place for them in the guest room. Nearby, shepherds were living in the fields, guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angel stood before them. The Lord's glory shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you, wonderful, joyous news for all people. 
Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign for you. You will find a newborn baby wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great assembly of the heavenly host was with the angel, praising God. They said, Glory to God in heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let us go right now to Bethlehem and see what's happened. Let's confirm what the Lord has revealed to us. They went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. When they saw this, they reported what had been told about this child. Everyone who heard it was amazed at what the shepherds told them. Mary committed these things to memory and considered them carefully. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and found out from them the time when the star had first appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search carefully for the child. When that you found him, report to me, so that I too may go and honor him. When they heard the king, they went and looked. The star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stood over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother. Falling to their knees, they honored him. Then they opened their treasure chest and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and more.
Our scripture today comes from the Gospel of Luke, the first chapter, beginning with the 26th verse. When Elizabeth was six months pregnant, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a city in Galilee, to a virgin who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David's house. The virgin's name was Mary. When the angels came to her, he said, Rejoice, favored one, the Lord is with you. She was confused by these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. The angel said, Don't be afraid, Mary. God is honoring you. Look, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father. He will rule over Jacob's house forever, and there will be no end to his kingdom. Then Mary said to the angel, How will this happen, since I haven't had sexual relations with a man? The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come over you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the one who is to be born will be holy. He will be called God's son. Look, even in her old age, your relative Elizabeth has conceived a son. This woman who was labeled unable to conceive is now six months pregnant. Nothing is impossible for God. Then Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. Let it be with me just as you have said. Then the angel left her. Mary got up and hurried to a city in the Judean highlands. She entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. With a loud voice, she blurted out, God has blessed you above all women. And he has blessed the child you carry. Why do I have this honor that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. Happy is she who believed that the Lord would fulfill the promises he made to her. Mary said, with all my heart, I glorify the Lord. In the depths of who I am, I rejoice in God, my Savior. He has looked with favor on the low status of his servant. Look, from now on, everyone will consider me highly favored, because the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. He shows mercy to everyone, from one generation to the next, who honor him as God. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered those with arrogant thoughts and proud inclinations. He has pulled the powerful down from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty-handed. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, remembering his mercy, just as he promised to our ancestors, to Abraham to Abraham's descendants forever. Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months, then returned to her home. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So how many of you enjoy driving around and looking at the Christmas lights? Yeah, it's a lot of fun, isn't it? Back in uh, Greenville, where I grew up, there is a Roper Mountain Science Center. And for many years, they would have just this awesome Christmas light display. And at the very, very top of the mountain, there was this gigantic star. So huge. You could see it from way, way far away. Going up there and seeing that star was a great way, a wonderful way to prepare for Christmas. The Christmas lights are a welcome break to the darkness that comes so early this time of year. The lights 
are a reminder that all is not lost. There is hope. We use light as part of our Advent preparation. We use these Advent candles, lighting them one by one as symbols of hope and peace and love and joy. All that we have in our Savior Jesus Christ. I mean, we could have used other symbols. We could have used presents. We could have used flowers, the Christmas ornaments, or even just a, a plain wreath with the, the holly uh, berries on it. But instead, we light candles, a new one each week, to shine in the darkness of the world. The darkness that can seem so overwhelming. We light these candles because we believe in the words from John 1, 5. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. On this fourth Sunday of Advent in our Heart that grew three sizes worship series. We're focusing on when the light shines. I mean, even the, the Grinch recognized the importance of light. When little Cindy Lou who catches him trying to stuff that Christmas tree up the chimney and questions, what is he doing? He lies to her and says that there's a light on one side that just won't light. And I'm taking it to my workshop and we'll fix it up there and bring it back here. Well, the Grinch probably didn't understand how the light of Christ is a constant in our world. He did realize that light can break through the darkness. And he was trying to use that to his advantage to, to pull one over on little Cindy Lou. But here, here's the thing. Even when he sold all the trees with all of the lights, the light of Christmas was still oh so bright. It cannot be extinguished no matter how hard the Grinches in our world today try to do. The Grinch does all of his mischief and his efforts to stop Christmas from coming under the cloak of darkness. He hides his work in the dark so that no one will see him doing his horrible deeds. And then during the light of day, he realizes that no matter, no matter what stuff he takes, the light of Christmas is still there. He can't extinguish it. A another aspect of this story is, is little Cindy Lou Who questioning what's going on. Why are you taking our Christmas tree? Why? Children can ask really good, challenging questions, can't they? They can challenge our preconceived notions that we have as adults. They can help us look at things that maybe we hadn't considered. Matt Brawl suggests that the children tend to ask the kind of questions that we as grown-ups neglect or have forgotten to ask. Like, if God is big enough to create the mountains, how can God also live in our hearts? Through these questions, we are pushed. We're pushed to look at things differently and maybe, just maybe, change our minds. Through their questions, they help us to realize that things may not be as clear-cut as we might think they are. Their questions help shed new light on what may have been distorted in our darkness. Cindy Lou's question was perhaps the beginning of the Grinch's realization that he was mistaken in what he was doing. 
In our scripture today, there's another trial who asks an important question. See, Mary was just a teenager, most likely somewhere between 13 and 15 years old, when the angel Gabriel told Mary she was going to have a baby, God's baby. And Mary asked, how, how will this happen? Mary was a child of faith. She grew up hearing the words of the prophets. She was a faithful Jewish girl. She knew that God had promised to send them a Messiah. And yet, even as committed and faithful as she was, she didn't understand how God could do this. It was beyond her comprehension. She was a good girl. She had not been with a man. So how will this happen? Gabriel answers her understandable question with words that we still need to cling to. Nothing is impossible for God. Nothing is impossible for God. For God, it's not impossible for a young girl, a nobody from an unimportant village, to become pregnant without knowing a man. A poor, insignificant girl with no societal power is to become the mother of the King of Kings, the Prince of Peace, the Savior of the world. For God, it is not impossible for a baby who is born without a crib to lay in, born surrounded by animals to save the world. Not through battle and displays of strength, but through dying by the power of love. Friends, for God it is not impossible for a congregation of faithful people in Bedford, Virginia, to not only make a difference in their community and beyond, but to truly be a crucial part of making disciples that will transform this world and bring about God's kingdom here on earth. What it takes is to respond as Mary did. I am the Lord's servant. Let it be with me just as you have said. Can we respond like Mary did? Can we be open to participating with God in doing the impossible? See, I, I don't think that Mary knew all that she was going to face. I, I don't know that she realized her decision of saying yes was really going to change the world. I imagine she still had questions. But I also imagine that she did know that being pregnant and unmarried would cause her to be ostracized and she could even be killed. She knew that she was risking being all alone in raising this child. If she even got that opportunity, she might even face death. She knew that many women of that day actually did die in childbirth. So if she would survived all of that, she was facing a rough, torturous life. And yet she said, I'm the Lord's servant. She said yes. She was willing to participate in bringing God's light into the world's darkness. Are we willing and able to do that? To, com to commit to being the church God is calling us to be, even if it means people ostracizing us? Are we willing to be God's servant even if it means sacrifice and pain and difficulties? Are we willing to say yes when we know the journey ahead will be hard? 
Are we willing to bring light into the darkness that we find in this world? Many people have lifted Mary up as the ideal mother. Some have exalted her as a, a powerful woman who did not need to depend on a, a male for her identity, but claimed her place in society from God. But Mary is, is more than that. As Mark Allen Powell explains, Mary is an example of the ideal Christian. According to the Gospel of Luke, Mary is the person of all people, men and women alike, that we should emulate, especially those of us who wish to follow her son. We can see her faith and dedication to God from the beginning when she visits Elizabeth and then when her future is so uncertain. Even with all of the worries and the questions that Mary must still have been dealing with, when she encounters Elizabeth, instead of complaining or expressing her concerns, she lists a song of praise. With all my heart I glorify the Lord. In the depths of who I am, I rejoice in God, my Savior. He has looked with favor on the low status of his servant. She then celebrates some of the ways that God is doing the impossible. The ways God is sending light out into our dark world. God shows mercy to those who honor God. God scatters those with arrogant thoughts and proud inclinations. God pulls down the powerful and lifts up the lowly. God fills the hungry with good things and sends the rich away empty-handed. God remembers God's promises. Mary continues to live this faith and commitment throughout Jesus' life, following his ministry all the way to the cross. From the beginning encounter with Gabriel to the foot of the cross, Mary demonstrates how to live in God's light. Friends, our, our world needs light. There is so much darkness. The darkness of prejudice, the darkness of hunger, the darkness of oppression, the darkness of superiority, the darkness of war, the darkness of lies, the darkness of division and animosity. This is the darkness the Grinch thought would destroy Christmas. This is the darkness the Grinch thought would extinguish the light. But he found out that the light is more powerful than all that darkness. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. That is what we celebrate at Christmas. This week, as we finalize our preparations, may we all strive to live in that light and to turn to God for guidance to help us to bring God's light into the darkness that we encounter. I want to end this message with a poem from Howard Thurman out of his book, The Mood of Christmas. The title of the poem is, I Will Light Candles This Christmas. <clears throat> I will light candles this Christmas, candles of joy despite all the sadness, candles of hope where despair keeps watch, candles of courage for fears ever present, candles of peace for tempest tossed days, candles of grace to ease heavy burdens, candles of love to inspire all my living, candles that will burn all year long. 
Friends, may you light candles this Advent and throughout the year that will shine brightly in the darkness. Amen.
Now, in the name of 